Welcome back to our unit on transformations in the plane. We're going to focus on reflections today, uh, a wonderful thing that God has created in nature, uh, but something that we will take a look at uh, and study geometrically the properties and how we can represent ref reflections on the coordinate plane. Okay, so let's take a look at reflections. Here are some examples of reflections. Notice in the first example here, uh, we are reflecting across the y-axis. Uh, the points are equal distant from the y-axis. In the second example here, we're reflecting across the y-axis. Point A is 1, 2, 3, 4 units from the y-axis. A prime is also 4 units from the y-axis. Notice B and B prime are the same number of units away, same as C and C prime. Bottom example on the left, here we have circles being reflected across the y-axis. Notice every point is equal distant from the y-axis. And in our example on the bottom right, we're reflecting across the x-axis. All points are perpendicular to the line of reflection, and they are also equal distant from those lines. So those are properties of reflections. Notice these are not reflections, even though it appears that they are reflecting across a line of reflection. Notice the points are not perpendicular to that line of reflection or the same units away. You know, they're not in line, so it's not a reflection. Notice here it appears that it might be a reflection. Those points are not the same distance or the same direction from that line of reflection. Notice here we're just translating. In the top right example, we're just rotating. Okay, so let's take a look at reflections now in the coordinate plane and how we can represent them. So let's first of all begin by graphing the vertices of triangle ABC and then graphing the reflections as indicated. Okay, we begin by graphing the reflection of the triangle in line x across the line x equals 3. Notice I have that in blue. So remember in reflections we need to reflect perpendicular to that line of reflection but also maintain equal distance for my image and my pre-image. So A is two units from the line of reflection so we'll reflect it across two units. B is two units to the right, so when it reflects, it'll be two units to the left. And C is one unit to the left, so it'll become one unit to the right. When we graph the image, notice it maintains congruence. Okay, let's take a look now at graphing the line across the line Y equals one. It's a horizontal line, so we're gonna flip uh, the original, the pre-image in green, so A is two units above, so it'll go two units below. B was one unit above, so we'll go one unit below. <clears throat> and C was on the line of reflection, so it stays on the line of reflection. It does not move. And there is the triangle reflected across the line Y equals 1. So that's how we graph reflections uh, across horizontal and vertical lines. Let's now take a look at how we graph reflection across the line y equals x. So we'll graph the endpoint of fg and reflect its segment. So fg is at negative 1, 2 and 1, 2. And we want to reflect the segment across y equals x. So remember that is a solid line. Um, going through the y-intercept at 0 with a slope of 1. I sketch out that line. That's what it looks like. If we want to reflect it, now keep in mind we want to go perpendicular to that line of reflection and maintain equal distance. So I'm just going to graph g prime right there. So now if we reflect point f, we need to go perpendicular to that line of reflection. And if I continue that line, maintaining equal distance, 
f prime will go right here. And I can see that we've maintained the same shape because fg is two units, f prime g prime is two units, and point g and g prime are both equal distant from the line, and so are f and f prime. Let's do the same thing but reflect in y equals negative x. So if we keep the same points that we had from last time, so at negative 1, 2, and 1, 2, and we're going to reflect it with a negative 1 as our slope on this line now. So now we reflect point F across the line Y equals negative X, and we'll end up landing right here at negative 2, 1. And if we reflect point G, notice that'll take us <coughs> excuse me, uh, to negative 2, negative 1. <coughs> notice if we compare the coordinates, what we had before, F was negative 2, 1. And G was 1, 2. So notice as we match up those coordinates, you should start to see a comparison as we're looking at those. Actually, this one is negative 1, 2. Okay, so take a look at those. You'll see if you see a connection between the coordinates that are reflected across Y equals negative X. And we can do the same thing as we compare with the coordinates that we had for y equals x. Here f was 1, 2. This one was 1, 2. g was 1, 2. f was negative 1, 2. And that makes g 2, 1. And f prime 2, negative 1. Notice if you see any connections between f and f prime. And g and g prime. Hopefully notice that as we reflect across y equals x, you'll notice what happens to the coordinates. The coordinates just flip around. Negative 1, 2 becomes 2, negative 1. And as we take a look, when we reflect across y equals negative x, what happens to the coordinates? Well, we go from negative 1, 2 to 2, negative, negative 2, 1, and 1, 2 to negative 2, negative 1. You can see that the numbers, the values switch around, and we go from a positive here in the x or the a coordinate, and it becomes positive. We go from positive to negative. Uh, here we go from positive to negative, positive to negative. So the signs flip. So we say negative B and negative A is a way that we can write a rule for what's going on. So how do we describe this transformation? Well, in words, well, it's reflecting... It's reflection across the y-axis, and then let's start to take a look at what's happening to the coordinates. And the original is x, y, so if we take a look at all those coordinates, so this one is 0, negative 1. Its reflection is also 0, negative 1. The other coordinate is 3, 3. Its reflection is negative 3, 3. This top point of the triangle is the same in both of them, 0, 3. So we can't really tell what's happening in the coordinates by looking at the top and bottom points. But if we look at this point out here, 3, 3, 3, negative 3, well, what's happening to the coordinates? It appears that the x coordinate stays the same, but the y coordinate, or the Rather, the x becomes its opposite, right? From 3 to negative 3, 
whereas the y coordinate stays the same. So we'll say opposite of x and y. So as we list that in transformation notation, we'll say, well, x, y becomes opposite of x, y when we're reflecting across the y-axis. <clears throat> so let's put some of those rules down. When we're reflecting across uh, the x-axis, we haven't done that yet, or haven't written down the coordinate rule for that, but you can imagine as we're flipping across the x, the x-coordinate will stay, while the y-coordinate becomes the opposite. So if a, b is our original, it becomes a negative b. And just like we did in the previous example, when we reflect across the y-axis, our coordinates on the x-coordinate changes to its opposite, and the b-coordinate stays the same. And we talked about what happens when we reflect the line y equals x. The coordinates flip. So ab becomes ba. And when we reflect in the line y equals negative x, when we took a look at that example and saw the coordinate values flipped and they became opposites. So these are the coordinate rules for reflections. You don't necessarily have to memorize these rules. Uh, they're just a good reference that you can use. Uh, you can always remember the rules of reflection that they must, uh, the points must be perpendicular to the uh, line of reflection if you were to draw a line through those points, and they maintain equal distance from the line of reflection. So if you remember that, you'll be fine. Coordinate rules are just helpful if we want to do that a little bit quicker. So let's take a look now at something that's similar to reflection. It's symmetry. Uh, we talk about the line of symmetry, which is kind of like your line of reflection within an object. And we talk about uh, how we can you know, cut that or divide that uh, shape uh, into half. That's what lines of reflection are. So if we take a look at these examples, First of all, see if you can figure out how many lines of symmetry there are, and pause the video and then uh, restart it when you're ready. In the first example, we have two lines of symmetry, a vertical line and a horizontal line. Next example, we have the regular hexagon. There are six lines of symmetry. And hopefully, you'll start to see a connection between regular polygons. Uh, if I have a six-sided figure, there are six lines of symmetry. A square, a four-sided figure, has four lines of symmetry. A triangle, a regular triangle, has three lines of symmetry. So you can start to gather a regular three-sided figure has three, a regular four-sided figure has four, a regular six-sided figure has six. So any regular polygon, those are polygons, the same uh, side length, same angle measures, will have that number of lines of symmetry. And figure C has one line of symmetry. So that is all for the uh, discussion on uh, reflections and a uh, small little discussion on symmetry. If you're an accelerated geometry, we're going to get you into the matrix and talk about how we use the matrix for uh, using, working with reflections on the coordinate plane.